sorry. So we wanted to understand um, the 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 risk factor. So here you can see in this network the risk factor related to antibiotic resistance. And here, each of those variables is one antibiotics, and uh, this is the encoding of if if a, a certain uh, subject is resistant or not. So zero one. Um, in this example, um, the the purpose was after an introduction of a new legislation in in Sweden was to understand. Um, what are the protective factor and risk factor for for animal welfare? So so we use we use the the, the Bayesian network in, in in order to to understand this complex relationship, and and the last one here it's it's about the a so called technopathy. So this is a disease that happened to animals. Only I mean th this disease. Uh, is not present in the wild. This is just because we breed the animal that they have a certain disease. So this is pododermatitis. And so where I want to go is to say that um, the scientific question between behind those papers. So here, the antimicrobial resistance, Bayesian network was a, uh, was suitable for this this problem because we have multiple outcome. So we want to to have a holistic view of multiple outcome on a single analysis. Uh, the second one is because, I mean, by nature, animal welfare is, is multidimensional. And we don't want, because the, the classical way in statistics to, to, to study uh, multidimensional uh, outcome is usually to do a score, for example. So you say welfare is a score between zero and one, and yeah. And here we do not want to reduce the complexity of the, inter uh, the relationship between the variable to just one score. And this is why um, we think that Bayesian network was, was suitable. And in the, in the last example, um, we use the ability of Bayesian network to generate hypotheses. So this is biological hypothesis about, okay, we have a certain technopathy and we want to understand why it happens. So which are the factor that affects the, the, the pododermatitis in industrial breeding uh, rabbits? Okay, so this was... Um, this was for, for, for the motivation why we can or in which setting uh, a Bayesian network analysis could be, could be used and what, which kind of, of uh, scientific question you can address using Bayesian network. Um, okay, so now I, I want to situate ABN or the Bayesian network into the, the big landscape of machine learning. So you can see here, that you have the, the three pillars of, of machine learning. So the supervised learning with regression classification, um, you have the reinforcement learning, and we, you have the unsupervised learning. So ABN has a, a data analysis niche uh, near to this dimensionality reduction where we speak about structure discovery. So um, using a statistical model to try to, to to understand the underlying structure of a complex data set. Okay, so what is the objective of this uh, workshop? So how to learn Bayesian network uh, from observational data. So actually, if you are unfamiliar with this term, so in this case, learn is synonym as uh, to select. So first thing first, what is a Bayesian network? Um, it's defined by two elements. So first, the network structure. Um, you probably have already heard this word, uh, DAG for directed acyclic graph, um, which is the set of the vertices. So, so, so the, the random variable, the column of your, your, your data set, and the arcs, which are the, the relationship between those uh, variables. And the probability distribution. So this is two phase of the same uh, coin. And, and actually, um, the Bayesian network encode the factorization of the joint distribution. So a Bayesian network per se 
is a schematic representation of a statistical model. So how, how it works in practice. So from observational data sets, so the idea is to deduce a probabilistic model. And from this probabilistic model is to deduce the structure. So the, the, the feature of, of ABN uh, compared to other software to learn a Bayesian network is the fact that uh, ABN accepts multiple kind data type. So um, uh, binomial, Poisson distributed, so counts, uh, multinomial, and, and, and the Gaussian. Uh, and the, the, the trick to put that all together is to use the so-called exponential family. So profit from what have been developed uh, about the classical GLM regression setting in order to make all those data live in the same statistical environment and being able to construct the global network from that. So you start with an observational data set and the idea is to learn the probabilistic model and from the probabilistic model, you deduce the, the structure. So now let's speak about the um, limitation of this technique. So here I put you the, the number of nodes and the expected, uh, so the maximum number of DAG link. So you can see that this um, number increase quite, quite fast. And here it's the level of inference you can hope to do with a certain number of nodes. So of course, any Bayesian network modeling approach should have uh, imply some as, uh, approximation. So the very first one is to limit the number of parental nodes, and this will be part of the of the hands-on tutorial. Um, you will you will see how we do that in practice. So the idea is to control the level of complexity of your of your of your of your model in order to reduce the computational burden. Um, the other thing is to use decomposable score, so score that you can uh, compute separately on each of the nodes. And another feature is to have a, um, the so-called score equivalent. So now I want to give you with this slide, it's a quite technical, but so th the purpose is not to enter to the, to the detail, the mathematical detail, it's just to give you the feeling how um, we deduce the, the structure from the probabilistic model. So the idea is you take the, the, the definition of the, of the conditional, probab um, conditional probability here at the top in number one, you take the base theorem from those two, you, sorry, you can deduce the definition, so the so-called conditional independence. So if you have a set of three nodes from those two lines, you can uh, deduce the factorization of the joint probability in order that uh, for, for conditionally independence. And there is a theorem from Verma and Pearl, 1988, that make a link between a statistical statement, so the conditional independence, and a graph property, which is the de-separation. And any, or to the best of my knowledge, all the algorithm that tries to learn Bayesian networks so select Bayesian network from observational data, take profit from this. Um, so essentially take profit from this, this uh, theorem. And here you can see that if you have the, the, all the possible uh, direction of the arrow for a set of three nodes, one colliding arrows, so this one, do not imply conditional independence. The three other implies conditional independence. So if you have access to this information, which variable are conditionally independent or not, then you can start to construct the network. So this was just this brief introduction, just to give you a taste of um, how in, in practice, so what, what under the hood, how do we, do we construct the structure for, from, from the probabilistic model?
Sorry. And now the sorry, can I just ask a question? Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, there is no independence in the previous slide because uh, you you can't know the relationship between A and B on the left. Ah, you mean you mean in the here on the left, you have uh, the you know the relationship between A and C and B and C, but you don't know between A and B. So that's why there is a no um, you have no conditional independence. Oh my. Okay. Um, so, so um, I'm not entirely because the so the point is um, if you if you want to factorize this uh, set of three nodes, so if you write the probability of A B C, and you decompose this probability knowing that this is the structure you expect, so so the joint probability of A B C is uh, the probability of C give, uh, given A times the probability of C given B. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you, um, so if you, if you continue to work on this, um, this expression, you can show that it implies that there, uh, you, you, you cannot factorize that using uh, conditional independence. No, or did I? No, no. It was just a, a question. Uh, why? Why is it, this part is not on the right? Because uh, uh, you have no, no. I mean, from what I see, that you can't infer from uh, this graph the relationship between B and A. You don't know. Oh, I don't understand what this. Uh, it means that A uh, uh, causes C. No. So, so maybe if you if you want we, during the hands-on exercise, we can. Um... Yeah. I, uh, we can have a further chat on 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 that. No problem. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so um, so there there is so so the idea of the learning uh, Bayesian network. Um, there are two class of algorithm to do that. Either you you directly test the conditional independence and you can construct the structure from there, and this is called the constraint based algorithms. Or and ABN lies on this side of the, of the of the slide, um, this is the so-called search and score algorithm. So the idea is to maximize the uh, so-called a posteriori score. So essentially, you you take a score. In this case, it could be BIC, the log marginal likelihood, or, or there are some B, uh, Bayesian Dirichlet score. That if they are well designed, um, you 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 if you maximize this score, the structure. On a conditionally to a structure, the structure will represent well your data. Um, so the task of learning a Bayesian network, uh, it's a, it's a two-step process. So you have the model selection, so the structure learning, and you have the parameter learning, so parameter estimation. And here it's the, it's the, the, the Bayesian view of this uh, two-step process. Um, for, so everything I said up to now is quite general. So now I want to go more focus on um, ABN. So how ABN is working in this case? So again, it's a search and score algorithm. So the idea is you construct a big list with all atomic possible structure. You use a model, in this case, a GLM with the exponential family in order to have the score for each of those atomic network. Then after you use a certain uh, algorithm, so in the Hanson, you will see that there are an exact algorithm and there are some heuristic algorithm as an example. And you try from the atomic, so from this big list to, to put all the nodes and to maximize the sum of the score. So the global score of your network. And finally, you have a structure that has the highest uh, posterior probability and from conditionally to this network, you uh, compute the marginal posterior density, so essentially the, the regression estimate. So conditionally to the structure, you estimate the parameter for the Rx. Um, so in R, using ABN, it's the sequential application of uh, three functions, so bird score cache, to construct the cache here in gray, uh, most probable, 
in order to uh, compute, to maximize the, the a posteriori uh, uh, network and fit ABN to compute the, the parameter estimate. There are other structures that we will uh, see in the exercise. So one thing is to ban or retain some, some structures or so some arcs. So you can imagine that, for example, if you, in your data set you have um, biological sex of a subject or animal, no variable can influence those, um, those uh, variables. So the idea is to restrict your problem to um, relationships that are plausible from a biological or for, for, from, a, from, a, from, a, from a subject perspective. So you can ban some, some, some arcs or you can retain some arcs because you can say, yeah, from a prior knowledge, so uh, we know for the last 10 years that um, this, there should be an, a relationship between these nodes and these nodes. And two other uh, possible uh, feature are the so-called random effect for uh, accounting for clustering using mixed model. We are not going to discuss that in the hands-on and adjustment. Um, here it's a big map of uh, the different function implemented in ABN. So um, you have the core function, so the model learning with bell score cache. It has a, a, a Bayesian implementation using Bayesian regression and MLE using the classical GLM. Uh, you have some search functions, so most probable for doing the exact search. Uh, search, uh, there is a hill climber and there is a, a heuristic that implement different heuristic algorithm in order to maximize the score of your network. And then after for the parameter learning, there is the fit ABN function that returns you the the, the value of the of the coefficient. And again, this is there is a, a Bayesian and an MLE implementation. Um, additionally to that, there are function called ancillary function for analysis that you can you can uh, use. So for example, what is in this one? It's a, it, there is just a MLE implementation. It's uh, with what is the contribution of each of the observation to the global score. And uh, there are some function to do some simulation. So you can uh, simulate uh, DAGs or you can simulate uh, ABN data. Excuse me, can I ask something? Yes. Uh, so is there a need for a prior in this process? Um, uh, yes, so ABN, so, so there are multiple priors that um, use. So um, you can have a, so when you do the, the most probable, you need to have a, a prior for the network. So how do you determine the prior? In this case, uh, two prior are already implemented. So you use a default value? Yeah, there, there are, there are um, to, if I remember well, uh, they are uh, purely an informative prior. Um, and we implemented two informative, semi-informative priors. Yep. So, so there are some default there. And, and uh, so this is for the prior for the structure. And there is priors for uh, parameter estimation in the Bayesian uh, setting of uh, Bayes core cache or fit ABN. And uh, here, uh, they are implemented. Uh, they are hard implemented in the code. So this is a weekly informative priors. So uh, excuse me for asking again, but um, uh, I've seen in some um, that some reviewers always, when there is a Bayesian uh, application, they ask how you determine the priors and ask why you are using the mm -hmm. the default ones and not something else. So I, I'm not sure I understand the way you'd select the, the priors. So, so, so for, for, for the parameter the default. So for the parameter estimation, there is no possibility, except if you if you modify the hard code, there is no possibility to choose another prior. Oh, so okay. the prior have been uh, selected because um, this is the only possibility. So using those prior is the only possibility in order to make uh, the computational uh, burden accessible on a, on a laptop machine. So essentially the choice of the prior is driven by um, 
the, the, the computational complexity of the problem. Uh, and and um, I think in the vignette of the paper, there is a discussion about, uh, because the only prior you can, you can select uh, is the prior for 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 the for the search in in most probable, and there is a discussion about uh, the advantage of the two different priors. Yeah, uh, if you have time later on, can you explain us how you end up with the selected prior? So, yeah. what's the rationale for for using for selecting a prior? Yep, yep, okay. uh, yeah. I will, I will. Uh, if you if you put that in the chat, I can come to your breakout room. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So uh, this is the end. So uh, this is the end of this uh, brief introduction. Um, so it's a very selected bibliography. Um, so now I um, want to go in the in the in the presentation for the hands-on exercise. Uh, it's a very good point. So, so we are quite a lot in this in this tutorial. So, if you have any question, I think the best is uh, put it on on Slack, and I I will come to your breakout room, and uh, we will try at the end to collect all the all the question and to make an FAQ and put that on the website for the for the tutorial. Um, for all the question, we have an answer and. So for the hands-on session, um, relatively quickly. Uh, so this is the software requirements. This is the way the same uh, you have on the on the on the website. Uh, so the data we are going to use is a veterinary epidemiological research. Uh, they come from this book. Um, this is the uh, data about pig. So this is gross performance in uh, and abattoir findings of pigs from a selected farms in Canada. This is a quite old data set. Um, the advantage is it has a mixture of different variables. Um, so the, the data were collected in order to study the interrelationship among respiratory disease. Uh, so you have a multiple disease and the daily weight gain. Uh, so this is ADG and this is what you are interested in. So this is the, your, your target variable. Um, this is the, the data as described in the book. Um, so we will not use all the data sets, so we simplify a little bit the, the data. So here you can see uh, the encoding of the, of the variable. So this one is binomial because as, as I said, ABN can um, support different data kinds, data type. So binomial Poisson counts, uh, multinomial, and Gaussian, but you need to provide this information to ABN. So the very first thing you do when you do an ABN uh, analysis is to construct a list, a name list with the, the variable you have and which um, uh, distribution you want for, for this variable. So so uh, all those ones are, bi uh, are uh, binomial, the worm count uh, is a is a number, so this is a poisson. Uh, this one is assumed to be to be uh, uh, continuous as well as as this one. So the average daily weight gain and the the age of uh, the the pigs. Um, so just to give you some insights, the idea of an ABN modeling step. So first thing you uh, search for the optimal model. Um, you always, it's a, it's a good idea to try to visualize the data. And, and then after, once you did this first analysis and you know the level of complexity you need uh, to, to have an optimal model, then you do the so-called bootstrapping. So in the, in the, tutor, in the, in the hands-on, uh, we provide you with the code to do the parametric bootstrapping. And the idea here is to prune the, the unnecessary arcs. So um, to, to adjust the network in order that they, you don't overfit your data. 
And then after from, from there, you, 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 from, from the prune DAG, you extract the marginal density, uh, you present the final DAG, and you can start to do the interpretation. Yeah, very good. So, so, so as a, as a, um, as an ID, so the ID is, 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 um, uh, it's not an academical exercise. It's more like, uh, you have, uh, you have the code, um, you, you have the, the output and, and the ID is to, to, to understand how an analysis is, is done, which step are necessary, how you perform them. And again, uh, this is quite debatable because uh, we present uh, for the bootstrapping part, we present uh, uh, parametric bootstrapping, but you can also do non-parametric. So essentially sampling inside the data set uh, in order to, to, uh, to prune your network. Hi everyone, again, back to the main, uh, back to the main room. So I did not have the chance to pass to all the, all the room, but I hope that you, you if you have uh, some question, you can you 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 have the chance to ask that to the, them to to TA. Um, so what we would like to do in the in the next ten minutes is uh, now now you you have seen this exercise this hands-on um, to go through the hands-on a little bit together and discuss important points. So just from the from the from the table of content. So um, this is this is uh, the preliminary. So so the the idea of this uh, I I put that in the chat in the Slack. Uh, so the idea of this uh, hands-on exercise is more to provide you with an entire code that could be used in another context for another analysis if you want to reproduce that with your own data. So um, all those points here. It's more like the preliminary uh, steps you need to follow in order to format the data, in order to ABN to understand your, your data. And um, this one is um, to do the first run um, and to um, identify which complexity level is required by your data. Um, and, and from this point here, it's about parametric bootstrapping. So I saw during the exercise and during the, the discussion that um, it was a it was a hard part of the of the of the exercise. So here the idea of the parametric bootstrapping is so you identify the model you think that represents well your data. And the question from there is to know if this model is too complex in a sense that it contains some arg that are unnecessary. So if you overfit your data, from this question, you have two directions possible. The first one is to do parametric bootstrapping. So essentially generating data from your model and doing a search over and over on the generated data. So this is what is presented here. So this is the parametric bootstrapping. Another approach would have been, and for the next version of the tutorial, I think I will go in this direction, would have been to use a non-parametric bootstrapping. So essentially, a, if I may say a for loop, where you sample your data set. So essentially you, you sample 80% of your data and you do a search on that and you do another search on on another 80% and et cetera, and et cetera. And you generate many, 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 many search. So you have lots of DAGs. And at a certain point, you try to combine all those DAGs to identify which ARC are well supported by your data and which are, ARC are not. And, and the last part is more about presenting the, the, the results. So we can maybe quickly go into the into the, the HTML page. So this is to plot the data. I always advise you to do that before doing any uh, Bayesian network analysis. Um, so this is the point where you, you, you choose the distribution. So you need to assign every variable to a, a distribution. Um, this is the part where you um, give the ban and retain. 
So which variable are going to be, um, which arc are going to be banned, so uh, discarded from the analysis, or which are retained, so always present in the analysis. On which basis is that? Uh, so prior knowledge. So there is no, so this is something, as a subject expert matter, this is your job to know um, what should be banned and what should be retained. Mm -hmm. So there is no general rule. Of course, the more you ban and retain, the more external input you put in the process, the, the, the more uh, feasible the analysis would be and sensible because the advantage of banning an arc will prevent ABN from returning an, a, a DAG that, that is from, from, from the subject expert matter nonsense. So if you know for sure that an arc could not exist, then you should provide this information to ABN before. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one, maybe one important point is this function, Bell score cache, which create the cache. And again, here the naming is, is maybe a little bit limited because um, this is a complex object that is a list that contain all the information needed for most probable and other function to optimize your network. So essentially this is not just the cache, it's much more than this. So once you have this object, you, you fit that into the, into the most probable. So in this case, an exact search, um, you, you have the network and you fit this network. Again, th this function returns you a complex object, which is a list that contain more information and uh, everything that is needed for fit ABN to return you the, the, the coefficient. Here we just extract the, the, the network score. And from there, this is where you start to uh, identify the level of complexity that is needed in order to represent your data well. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a naive for loop. And again, it works because we have a very limited number of data. Maybe if you have a um, more data, uh, more viable than this, you need to have a smarter um, a procedure in order to, to identify this level of complexity. So here it's a, it's a for loop where you do all that and you plot the marginal uh, likelihood uh, in function of the number of parents and you see that it reached a maximum and, and it never uh, increase again. So you say that the good level of complexity in order to explain the data is, is for parents. Um, so you plot this DAG and again, here you do one search. So you have your data, you put everything inside, you have the level of complexity, then poof, you generate the DAG. The problem, and this is what is discussed here, it's, it's um, highly probable because this model is very complex and the number of data is very limited. So in this case, we have 341 observation, which is not a lot. And this is very likely that you will overfit your data. And to avoid that, um, it is strongly advised to, to use some pruning method. So in this case, we, we, we propose the parametric bootstrapping, but again, uh, any other approach um, including some that will be presented in the next hands-on exercise could be suitable. And maybe the non-parametric approach um, would be easier to, to put in practice. So here, essentially, the idea is you have a certain model. From this model, you can generate some data. And what we are going to do is to, to, to do that sequentially over and over using JAG and it implies to, to encode your model in a certain language called bug, uh, bug language to run JAG on that over and over in order to generate data from your model. So when you say pruning, you refer to the variables, prune your variables, narrow down your variables. Pruning, no, this is, this is the arc. So it's because the, the, the variable, this is, a, this is, um, this is your, 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 your data, but your modeling is about the arcs. So essentially the structure. So how many arcs do you see in your data? And, 
And here what we want to do, and this is uh, this step is about, okay, we identify the best network with, for example, this arc here. Yeah, you can see my, um, so yeah. am I sharing my screen or yeah. not? Yeah, okay, okay. Um, uh, so you see, for example, this arc, okay? The question is how robust this arc is, or is it just there because this model score a little bit better than another one, but it's not very robust because it's driven by some outliers or some, some few observations, okay? And this is what we want to do now. It's to know and to return a more pruned DAG, which, which keep only the robust part of your, of your modeling. Um, and what's the least uh, minimum uh, sample size you could accept? So uh, that, it's a very it's a very complicated it's a very complicated question. So, so the thing you need to keep in mind is from a practical perspective, the more data you have, the better it is, because Bayesian network modeling is uh, heavily complex, so implying a lot of parameter. So. Uh, now, another question is how many search are you going to do? So if you do non-parametric bootstrapping, are you going to bootstrap that uh, 100,000, 10,000, 100,000, or 1 million times? Uh, here, it's hard to say. Um, I advise you to test. But uh, in this example, we use 1,000. If it was for a publication, I would go for at minimum 10,000. Oh. So. Yeah. And, and here, so, so you can see, so this is the original data. This is the simulated data with your model. So you can see that except, for example, for word count, which we, where we do not have the same uh, tail and probably for, for, for the, those variables, they are quite similar. And the idea is to iterate the simulation of your data, the search, the simulation, the search, and et cetera, and do that many, 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 many times. In this case, 1,000, but probably more if you want something robust. And from this big list of DAC, so you have a, 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 a big array of, of, of DAC, from this, you can compute, for example, the distribution of the arcs. So, so it means that sometimes for some of the simulation, a five, you have a, a five arcs, and sometimes you have 11. So you can see that by doing that again and again and again, you have a certain diversity of model from your data. And this is, for me, the main justification why it's super important to not rely on the best possible DAG you have, but to average out that on many simulations. Um, so here, the strategy I propose, we propose in this tutorial, uh, in this exercise, it's to take everything that is supported by at least 50% of the bootstrap sample. But again, it's a, another strategy could be also valid. So for example, you could say, no, 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 no. I think, I think everything that is supported at least by 30% of the, of, the, of the simulation would be sufficient because we want to see something. Or you can say, no, we just want to have the very, very, very robust. And then we just keep everything that is supported by 90% of your, of your data. So here you can see it's, it's um, uh, the percentage of ARC retrieved within the bootstrap sample. So you can see that, for example, this ARC appear, appears uh, only four times over the thousand. Um, this one is always there. This one is always there. Yeah. So from this matrix, which come from the bootstrapping, you can generate a prune DAG. And then after, from this DAG, so now we work in this DAG, so we say that, okay, this DAG is more robust than the other. From this DAG, uh, so, so here uh, it's showing how, how you can uh, see the, 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 the distribution for, for each of the parameter. Okay, um, and more importantly here, it's a Bayesian approach. So by default, ABN is generating a Bayesian analysis. Um, here, we uh, can compute the different quantiles for the regression estimate. So if we go, yeah, with the different interpretation. So if we go to the final result, so this is the DAG. Here I present you, so, so this was one of the questions that someone asked me during the exercise is how, um, 
we know that an, an arc has a, a positive, so an odds ratio uh, more than one or less than one. So here, the dashed one uh, encode a negative uh, correlation and uh, the, the plain one are positive. And the thickness of the arrow is proportional to the bootstrap sample. So essentially, you can see that some arrow are visibly more supported by your data than other. And you have the table of coefficient here. OK, for the sake of time, I think I have to close that there. Um, I know that this is quite fast. And um, so give can me I, one. Can I ask one question? Is there? Yeah, please. So uh, when you select the, when you have your, the prior, do you do many iterations on the Bayesian uh, on the network? So you have the prior, you get an outcome, then do you do another iteration with this outcome as prior and carry on or? No, 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 no. We always use the, the default prior, which are weekly informative. No. Okay. okay, thanks. Thank you. So um, so now what I propose is uh, we start with the, with the second uh, presentation. I will go quickly over. Um, so in this presentation, I want to discuss two um, two points that have been discussed during during the hands-on in some of the room. Uh, it's what do you do? Because most probable works with 20 variable, let's say 25 if you have access to a cluster and lots of time, but not more than this. So if you have a problem where you have more than 25 variables, then you need to have another solution. The solution is to use heuristic. You have no guarantee that you will have the maximum, so the best scoring DAG, but at least you have you can optimize your DAG in order to have some high scoring DAG. And after, I will discuss um, the robustness of, of the DAG uh, using MCMC over structure. Uh, here is a list. I don't want to speak about that. It's, it's the list of possible things that is not discussed in this tutorial, but still could be considered as an advanced feature of ABN. So up to now, you did uh, work with the exact search. So you have the guarantee that it works and uh, that it works, that it give you, returns you the best fitting DAG. Now, um, to give you an example, so this is an example of an algorithm that optimized the DAG using greedy hill climbing. So, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> so you start with, with a given network. So, so for example, uh, you start with a with a empty network. At each iteration, you evaluate all possible change. So, for example, you 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 see here. For example, you have a random DAG. Then you change you change the direction of one arc, or you add an arc, or you delete an arc, and the score will change. And um, you apply the the change that. Uh, lead to an improvement of your score. And you do that again and again and again and again. So we will see that, and you stop when you see no improvement of the score. And we will see that in, de I mean, in detail. There will be an exercise in the, in the hands-on uh, to show you how this works and, and uh, how you plot the results. Um, of course, it comes with, with uh, pitfalls. So there is a risk of being stuck in local maxima. Uh, there is a risk of not uh, getting out of plateau. And for those, and I don't want to enter in the detail, but you have uh, many possible uh, algorithms. So you have the taboo search with discard. So, so for example, at each step, you record which move you already did, then you know that you, you are not going to do this move again. So you, you are forced to move in, in another place where you, you've never been. Uh, so there is another solution. It's the random restart. So at a certain point, you, 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 you restart your search. And there are some more um, complex algorithm, which, for example, some of you may know the simulated Annie League. OK, so I go quickly there. Um, now I want to speak in the 10 last minutes for this uh, tutorial. I uh, want to speak about the 
robustness of the output outcome of an ABN analysis. So the trustworthiness. So here it's an example of, of one uh, Bayesian network I I did. Uh, in a, so here it's the it's the it's the paper we published this material. So so you have this analysis. So now, and I think everyone who do in practice Bayesian network analysis, you will encounter this problem. So imagine you present that to your peer, your supervisor, or or a subject expert matter, and suddenly he say, yeah, but look, I don't believe that this arc is plausible from a biological perspective. Or you say, yeah, yeah, I mean, this this is very unlikely based on my experience, but why don't you have an arc there? I mean, uh, we know for sure for the last 20 years of research that there should be an arc here. Or worst case scenario, you start to draw on your on your, on your your output and say, no, 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 no. We, we know for sure that uh, there should be something here, nothing from there, and and... And here you are stuck because, uh, I mean, there is a software that gives you uh, a DAC. You did all the math correctly, so you, you prune, you, you bootstrap, you, you do everything, but still people are not convinced and ask you questions about what is, what is, do you really believe that this arc should be there? And, and, and you want to discuss this. So the idea you have when you do a Bayesian network analysis, so ABN, it's that the best possible DAG, so the one you present, it's there is a huge gap between this DAG and the alternative network. So this is the idea we all have in mind, yeah? So we identify the best possible DAG and, and it's, it's best in the sense that it's well separated from all the other possible network. But what about the situation where you have a competitive network? So a network that score quasi equally well which is very different, but have a, 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 a smaller score. So in your paper on your research or, 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 or to your peers, you present this uh, network, but this network visibly count also because it, it, it quasi does the same score, but a very, with a very different interpretation. So what do you do? And one possible solution for, for addressing this issue it's to do the so-called MCMC over structure. So we will have a small worker like this. And the idea is, again, like we have in the heuristic search, it, it can move from structure to structure. So you can add an arc, delete an arc, reverse, or shuffle part of your network. And the idea is the uphill steps are always accepted. Um, moderate downhill is usually accepted, and you almost never accept the, the steep downhill. And by letting this worker moving from structure to structure, you can sample the posterior distribution of all the possible network. So here you have the DAG score. Uh, in, in this part of the graph, the, the gray zone here is the burning. So this is something you discard after because you you think that um, um, your MCMC chain chains. So MCMC stands for uh, Monte Carlo Markov chain. So Monte Carlo, it's uh, it's uh, it means uh, random, and uh, Markov chains means that the 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 next step you are going to to do is only influenced by the last step. So you forget about the past. Um, so. The MCMC chains, so, so here you can see that we have, a, 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 I think, four uh, MCMC runs, so here, yeah. And you can see them moving from DAG to DAG. And what you have here, it's the posterior distribution of all the possible models. And and here in the in the in the zoom out, it, this is the same, but with a with a much much larger number of steps just to show you that it converged to the to the maximum okay from this distribution what you can do is instead of presenting the best unique possible network where essentially an arc is a zero one relationship so you say there is a relationship there isn't a relationship instead of presenting a zero one DAC you can start to have all your network stack 
one to the other, and you can count the prevalence of the arc. And by doing that, you can do the so-called structural queries. So essentially, you can start to compute the probability of having a certain structure. So what is the probability of having an arc? Or what is the probability of one node being in the neighborhood of I don't know which node? Or more interestingly, I think, what is the probability of not having a, a, a relationship between two nodes? So, um, so the MCMC over structure, so the idea is select the most probable structure, control for overfitting. So, so with this, uh, so this is implemented in MCMC ABN. So it works well with the output of ABN. So the idea is you can select the most probable structure. So you can use that as a heuristic tool. You can control for overfitting because as you have access to this DAG, you can start to select which arc are needed and from each arc are not needed. But most importantly, this is the, the dose line here. By sampling the landscape of high, high scoring structure, so in an applied perspective, you avoid to reduce the richness of a Bayesian network modeling to only one structure. So you don't present one Bayesian network. You present the entire posterior distribution of the Bayesian network. And, you, and then you can quantify the marginal impact of a relationship by marginalizing over structure. So it means that by having all those DAGs, you can have an idea of what is the effect of, of one variable over another in the global context of all the possible network. So, yeah. Um, so now we will jump on the hands-on exercise. So, yeah, what I propose is uh, we can we can uh, do uh, as before, and I will uh, we uh, the TA will will try to uh, pass from from one uh, uh, breakout room to to another. Uh, Reinhard, do you know if the 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 co-host you 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 put last time they are still co-host or they are still co-host? I didn't okay, uh, take great. those away, and so hence I would uh, reassign to the same breakout rooms. There have been some uh, uh, leaving or not, uh, so the breakout rooms may not be as equally distributed as they were before, but uh, in interest of, of time, we keep it that way. And then I would open all the rooms, correct? Nothing else to add from your side, Shil? No, nothing. Yep. Perfect. And we reconvene here approximately at uh, 40. Yes. Yep. So 20, 20 minutes uh, until reconvenience. Yeah. Yeah. That, which document is for this one? Sorry? Which document is for this ah, one? Ah, uh, yeah. So, so excellent question. Uh, if you go to the website, uh, there is, uh, so the website is, uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, um, so if you go, uh, I, I close it. So if you go to the to the to the website of the of the tutorial, uh, there will be second hands on. And and here you have again the the um, the HTML page that you can discuss, or and you have a zip file next to that where you can reproduce the results. Okay. Um, can I just ask a? a follow-up question about the lecture. Yeah, um, sure, so, sure. So in, in the results um, for the heuristic modeling, you would present all the different probabilities for the different arcs, not just one final model. So, so you mean for the, for the advanced feature, so instead of presenting uh, uh, the best fitting DAG with, with, the, pro with, the, with, the, with the arcs, uh, your question is, are we going to present all the possible um, probability? Is it correct? 
Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I mean, of course it's possible. I think this is not meant to be done like this in the sense that I think the most useful here information is about a dedicated uh, question. So for example, if you know that you you are super interested into the relationship between your variable A and B, here it works to speak about what are their probability to be to uh, to have an arc and what is the 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 because another question could be for example if you have another variable c that um, could uh, modulate the presence of an arc so you can start to ask those kind of question to the to the to the to the to the data but i would not go for presenting the entire probability or or maybe in the annex for example with a with a, with the mattress yeah so i propose that we we go in the breakout room and and for those who has a big question about lecture you can stay there and ask if you want so sorry a practical uh, th uh, thing in the folder in uh, github um i i don't i can't find um, a second document hands on hands on to uh, yeah but so you uh, yeah yeah so give me one second um um can you see my screen i think so um, so so um so here if you go to the website yeah so so you've been there correct so if you if you so this is the the html page for the second exam yeah and where is the rmd uh, if you go to the zip folder uh, I really hope that I put that there. Otherwise, I need to quickly change. Yeah, it's in there. I ah, have it from downloading the Okay, thing. so if you download this, inside you open and you have the RMD here. Okay. I'm... And and normally, if you execute that in this, uh, you, you will be able to reduce the HTML page. Okay, thanks. Uh, can Thank you please put again the link for this? Uh, so which one? Is it the... The last one you put? Yeah. Uh, so the links are in the chat, and you would just take then the corresponding slot uh, for for the, the corresponding time slot. Yep. Can you can you see in the chat of this uh, tutorial? Yeah, I can see the chat, but I can't find the the folder, the second folder, because when I open the last link you sent, I only have the. Let go. Yep. So so. Yeah. So if you look at so look at the screen, I I um so if you if you go to this, it's the zip folder from the second so the advanced feature and so yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. the link is I don't and, have... and the link is there so the link brings you now to the root page and I can... oh, okay now I found it okay yeah. thank you so much thank you very much.